The three most common temperature probes are made from thermocouples, thermistors, and calibrated sensors. Thermocouples consist of dissimilar metal alloys that respond to heat by generating a voltage at the junction where the wires are soldered together. A steel wire and a copper wire. Uh, this will be a thermocouple. It, it's made from dissimilar metals. Now this is a very crude uh, temperature probe, but uh, let's see if we can make one uh, and uh, see how it works. Okay, uh, so the first thing we're going to have to do is form a junction. So we're just going to uh, wrap this copper wire around the steel wire like this and then uh, solder it. Let's uh, see how this responds to temperature. So we're going to generate a voltage by applying heat at this junction. Uh, so we have our meter here and we're going to set the uh, sensitivity of uh, the meter to the microvolt range. This is the microvolt range. So right now you can see that it's measuring zero and that's uh, what we'd expect. There's no uh, the temperature at the junction is, is very low right now. So let's apply a little heat, a little heat. I have this soldering iron uh, and the temperature of the soldering iron right now it's about uh, 400 degrees or so. Alright, so we'll apply the temperature one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. So after about five seconds you can see the voltage went up to 0.4 microvolts. Not a lot of voltage that it's generating, but you can see that it works. So this is a, this is a, a bona fide temperature probe. Not the most sensitive temperature probe in the world, but it is a temperature probe. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so you can see the voltage went up to about uh, two microvolts rather than uh, 0.3 microvolts like it did with our other probe. So this thermocouple is a lot more sensitive than uh, the, the simple uh, temperature probe we made before. But uh, it's still not very sensitive. I mean, we're talking about microvolts. <coughs> uh, if we want to measure that and use that voltage, it, it's, uh, it's a little difficult. Uh, thermocouples are mostly used for, to measure very high temperatures. And also, they're, they're not very linear. Okay, the first probe that we've seen was uh, a thermocouple. Uh, this is made from dissimilar metals. If we apply heat to the junction, it will generate a voltage. Uh, the problem is the voltage that it generates is so small that it's very difficult to work with. Um, now there are other kinds of probes that respond to temperature. The next one we want to take a look at is the thermistor. Uh, here's an example of, of uh, here are examples of thermistors. Um, on the left we the thermistor is a 5K NTC uh, thermistor. In other words, at room temperature, uh, the, the resistance uh, across the thermistor is approximately 5 kilo ohms. The one on the right is a 10K NTC thermistor. NTC is, uh, means negative uh, temperature coefficient transistor. Another uh, resistor, I'm sorry. Anyway, it uh, it changes uh, the resistance gets l lower as temperature is applied. That's why it's negative temperature coefficient. Okay, now in the present state uh, these uh, thermistors are very vulnerable to weather conditions and I, I don't know if you can see the leads on this but um, if the leads get tangled around each other uh, they <laughs> the thermistor is not going to work. So we have to uh, change the uh, sensor. This is called the sensor. 
and we want to change this into a probe. And the probe could look something like this. Um, this is um, made from uh, shrink sleeves uh, so that it can endure uh, weather conditions. Anyway, uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, we'll be measuring uh, the resistance across uh, this thermistor as temperature changes. Our thermistor is all set up to measure temperature change. Um, the first thing we'll have to do though is we're, we'll have to adjust our meter to measure resistance because that's how the uh, thermistor works. It changes resistance as temperature changes. Uh, now remember this is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor, an NTC thermistor, a 5K NTC thermistor. So at room temperature the resistance of the thermistor is approximately 5K. And when I say room temperature I'm talking about 75 degrees. The temperature in this room right now is 55 degrees. So we would expect the resistance to be a little higher. So let, the first thing we want to do is we're going to set our meter to measure resistance. And as you can see the resistance of the thermistor right now is 7.3K. Alright, let's add a little heat. Uh, I can add some heat by just uh, putting my thumb on the uh, sensor. Remember it was 7.3K and now you can see the resistance start to drop as the thermistor is heated up. It's already uh, the resistance is down to 6.7K and so on. Uh, now I don't have too much heat in me today so let's use our soldering iron to speed up the heating process. Okay so we'll add a little more heat. Right now the, the resistance is uh, 6.5K. Let's add a little more heat and see what happens. Alright you can see the resistance rapidly dropping. All right, it's below 5K now. It's 2.7K, 2.5K, 1.4K and so on. So the more heat we apply the lower the resistance gets. Okay this is basically how a thermistor works. This is the LM34. You can see there's uh, three leads. Now uh, what this does is it will put out a voltage in proportion to temperature. In its present state this is the sensor. We want to first convert that to a probe. So our probe would look like this. Uh, and in order to measure a voltage we uh, have to um, put a, a, a certain uh, voltage into the calibrated uh, sensor. Okay, uh, so it's all set up to measure a difference in voltage. Let's take a look at it and see what the voltage uh, is that it's measuring. Alright, uh, so right now the temperature in this room is approximately uh, 58 or 59 uh, degrees. Right now the temperature is 62.7. Now let's raise the temperature a little by putting the, the um, soldering iron on it. Okay, already the temperature is up to 133, 145 and so on. Anyway, this probe is good up to, uh, well, up to the boiling point of water, but we're only going to measure it up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. For more green machine information, visit JC solarhomes.com